In this video, we will view and make use of the limit laws. We will see how the limit laws make the evaluation of limits of many functions much easier. Let's take a look now at what the limit laws say. If L, M, C, and D are real numbers, and the limit of f of x as x gets close to c is equal to L, and the limit of g of x as x gets close to c is equal to M, then we can make the following conclusions. The limit of a constant d as x is close to c is equal to d. If I have the limit of a sum of two functions, f of x and g of x, as x is close to c, that limit is equal to, li to the sum of the two limits. The limit of f of x as x is close to c plus the limit of g of x as x is close to c. Or I can say it's simply l plus m. If I replace the addition signs with subtraction signs, I have the difference rule. This says the limit of a difference is simply the difference of the limits, l minus m. And the constant multiple rule. So if I have the limit of a constant d times a function f of x as x is close to c, I can simply say that it's d times the limit of the function f of x as x is close to c, which is d times l. The limit laws also include the product rule, which is the limit of a product of two functions f of x times g of x as x is close to c is equal to the product of the two limits, l times m. If I have a quotient of two functions, f of x divided by g of x, and I want to consider what happens to that quotient as x is close to c, I can simply say that it's the limit of f of x as x is close to c divided by the limit of g of x as x is close to c. Provided that m is not equal to zero, or provided that that limit of g of x as x is close to c is not zero. And finally, I have the power rule, which says that the limit of a function f of x raised to the nth power as x is close to c is equal to first evaluating the limit of f of x as x is close to c and then taking that limit to the nth power. Now remember that things like a square root or a cube root are powers, so these, the power rule can also apply to um, fractional exponents. So let's take a look at how the limit laws apply in various situations. This first example will go through things in very detailed fashion. Um, and I'll, I'll document what you would need to show for an exam or submitted homework. Let's evaluate the limit of the square root of y plus 5 minus 3 divided by y minus 4 as y gets close to 4. Now initially I'd like you to pause the video and try to evaluate this limit on your own. When we consider this limit, I really want to consider what happens to this expression as y gets close to 4. And if I think of that, for y values close to 4, the square root of y plus 5 is going to be close to the square root of 4 plus 5. So that numerator is close to 3 minus 3, and the denominator is close to 4 minus 4, which means we would get 0 divided by 0. And that's a flag that says we must do more work. So, in, this next, in these next slides, we're going to take a look at um, the analytical approach to the evaluation of this limit. And first of all, I'm going to take this expression, the square root of y plus 5 minus 3 divided by y minus 4, and multiply by a form of 1. Namely, the square root of y plus 5 plus 3 divided by the square root of y plus 5 plus 3. Now multiplying by a form of 1 means that I'm not changing the value of my expression or my function and therefore I'm not changing the value of the limit. Now this particular choice of 1 is strategic because the square root of y plus 5 plus 3 is a conjugate of the square root of y plus 5 minus 3. So that when I multiply these two factors together I get a difference of squares which simplify very nicely. So that now my limit is the, square, the limit of the square root of y plus 5 minus 3 divided by y minus 4 is equal to the limit of y plus 5 minus 9 divided by the product of y minus 4 and the square root of y plus 5 plus 3 as y gets close to 4. And simplifying, I get that this becomes the limit of 1 divided by the square root of y plus 5 plus 3 as y gets close to 4. At this point, I have not really made use of the limit laws. 
So these next several steps document how I use the limit laws to get to my final limit or to get to the eva final evaluation of this limit. First of all, I note that I have a quotient. So the quotient rule portion of the limit law says that I can take the limit of 1 as y gets close to 4 divided by the limit of the square root of y plus 5 plus 3 as y gets close to 4. I've got a constant in that numerator. And then I note that I have a sum, uh, I have a limit of a sum in the denominator. So now my original limit is equal to 1 divided by the limit of the square root of y plus 5 as y gets close to 4 plus the limit of 3 as y gets close to 4. Again, if I take a look at the limit of 3 as y gets close to 4, this portion right here, the limit of 3 as y gets close to 4, is the limit of a constant, which means I can make use of the constant rule. And now, in that denominator, I've got the limit of the square root <clears throat> of y plus 5, as y gets close to 4, plus 3. So I can make use of the power rule portion of the limit laws, which says that I get 1 divided by the square root of the limit of y plus 5, plus 3. Well, y plus 5 is the sum, so I apply the sum rule. I then apply the constant rule as I take the limit of 5 as y gets close to 4. And at this point, I get that my original limit is now equal to 1 divided by the square root of the limit of y as y gets close to 4, plus 5, plus 3. The limit of y as y gets close to 4, well, that's going to be 4. So I have 1 divided by the square root of 4 plus 5 plus 3, which finally gives us 1 sixth. Wow, that was a lot of work. I'm glad that's over. But that brings up the question of, well, what would I expect to see on something that's submitted for homework or on an exam? Well, I'd like to see how that conjugate arises in that uh, multiplication by 1, then simplification down to the limit of 1 divided by the square root of y plus 5 plus 3 as y gets close to 4. And at that point, you can say the limit laws get me to the limit, to the evaluation of the limit as being 1 sixth. That seems to be a much simpler answer. Let's consider another example. Let's evaluate the limit of f of z times the square root of z plus 5 minus 3 divided by z minus 4 as z gets close to 4, provided we're given the graph of the function f evaluated at z. Again, pause and take a second and evaluate this limit on your own. The first thing that we note is that we have a product, the product of two functions. So therefore, the product rule portion of the limit law says that this gives me the limit of f of z as z gets close to 4 times the limit of the square root of z plus 5 minus 3 divided by z minus 4 as z gets close to 4. I notice in this second factor, well, that looks like the limit we evaluated just a minute ago. Only I've traded the y for a z. So therefore, I know the value of that limit. And that limit is 1 sixth. So now all I need to do is multiply by the limit of f of z as z gets close to 4. And for that, I can look at the graph. And I see that when z is close to 4, f of z is close to 3. So that the limit of this product, f of z times the square root of z plus 5 minus 3 divided by z minus 4 as z gets close to 4, is simply 1 half. The limit laws really make the evaluation of the limits of poly involving polynomials much easier. Well, let's remind ourselves what polynomials are. Here are three examples of polynomials. And the first thing that we'll note as far as the characteristics of polynomials is that they are functions for which the powers on the independent variable are whole numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Secondly, the coefficients of the powers of the independent variable are real numbers. And finally, the terms of the the terms are added or subtracted together. So that makes application of the limit laws very useful here because I've got powers with constant multiples out in front and then the terms are added or subtracted together. 
so that given a polynomial p evaluated at x, the limit of that polynomial as x is close to c is simply the polynomial evaluated at c. So one example is if I take a look at the limit of w evaluated at r as r is close to 2, I can simply plug 2 in for r and I get that's that, that that's the polynomial w evaluated at 2. I can also evaluate the limits of rational functions. And just a reminder, a rational function is a polynomial, p of x, divided by another polynomial, q of x. Here are some sample rational functions. And you might look at those and look at g of y equal to negative 13.994 and say, well, that's a constant function. How is that a rational polynomial? Well, I can write it as a polynomial divided by another polynomial. And given a rational function with polynomial p of x divided by another polynomial q of x, as long as q evaluated at c is not equal to 0, the limit of that rational function p of x divided by q of x as x is close to c is equal to p evaluated at c divided by q evaluated at c. And so if I want to look at the limit of the function r evaluated at x as x is close to negative 3, I've got that rational function, and I can simply evaluate that rational function at negative 3, which in this case would be a negative 203 divided by 19. So in this video, we've looked at the lemma laws, applied them in a couple of different examples, as well as considered how we evaluate the limits involving polynomials and rational functions.